Welcome to VTeach. In this session, we will be discussing about 8086 family overview. So, which means this gives us an information related to how extendedly the 8086 has been improved by little modification. We will be having only the basic form of it. That is, whenever a small change is there, what happens with 8086? As you know that the architectures of processor are being started with 4-bit representations that is from Nibble. So, we have that as 4004 is the first processor which works on 4-bit of data. Later on, we had improved that to 8-bit of data. There, we had called it as 8085. And when we improved that, to the 16 bit of data we have come across 8086 and this 8086 is well organized structure and the components are being placed intact with each other in order to perform a particular task and occupies less space. So, it plays a major role based on its internal architecture. So, the overview of the family will be considered from 8086 onwards. Even though there exist 2 or 3 before 8086, we will be considering only from 8086 as the base processor. And as I said, the 8086 is a 16-bit processor where the internal registers and the arithmetical logic unit will be of 16-bit size or length which is capable of holding 16 bits of data and it is going to have 20-bit address bus. So, which means it will be able to have an access of 2 power 20 memory locations that is 1 megabyte memory locations will be accessed. Next to this 8086, we had another important processor is 8088, which is having the same internal structure of 8086. Everything is same except the data bus. In 8088, the data bus size is of 8 bit. Rest of the features of 8086 and 8088 are same. And 8086 is capable of accepting 8-bit data as well as 16-bit data either in split or as a single unit. But when it comes to 8088, the 8088 as the data bus is of 8-bit. So, the 16-bit data in order to read or write, it needs to perform two different operations. So, that is the only drawback in 8088. It cannot perform well. Even it can perform twice that of the 8086. So, that is why it is least preferred in applications. And next to it, you are going to have the improved version to the 8086 that is 80186. Remember, 8086 is the base version, the improved version is 186, the first improved version. And uh, here in this version, you are going to use programmable peripheral devices. So, every device is being pre-programmed and they are being connected to the processor. So, that in order to avoid the execution or in order to minimize the execution time period. And 80186 instruction set will be a subset of 8086 instruction set. Means, very few instructions from 8086 will be utilized in 80186. So, that the programming length will be minimized by which the execution time is further minimized. That is the important advantage of 80186. And the improved, again a small extension to the 80186 is 80286. And even 80286 is also 16 bit. But the advanced version of 80186 is that, why it is 286 is that, it can be used for multiple systems as well as multiple users. 
so multiple users and multiple systems or multitasking computers will be capable of utilizing this structure and when it comes to the 80386 so 8086 we had minimized the instruction set and then we had moved on to 80186 and after minimizing what is that is to be utilized to multiple purpose or to multitaskings we had made certain changes in 186 and we call it as 286 now we are moving on to the another version of 8086 is 80386 the term itself says it is a third generation or a third member of 8086 in which we had made it as 32 bit processor it will be capable of reading or writing 4 bytes of data at one instant of time so if 8086 needs to perform an operation related to 32 bit it needs to perform two times but if the same 80386 is been utilized to perform that 32 bit only one operation is been required so we had minimized the number of operations so we will call this as ia32 architecture so which can also be utilized for multi users and multitasking applications and coming to the next version of this 32 bit processor we have introduced the floating point representations in same 386 and we will call it as 486 generally 8086 will be performing only a real time integers or real time data as i said earlier if it wants to perform floating point or else some complex operations it needs to rely on coprocessor 8087 so in order to avoid that we had come up with a solution and we call it as 80486 as we had gone with 32 bit processor so here we will be having a floating point processor already been integrated internally inside it there is no need of adding some other coprocessor to it during the manufacturing itself we will inbuild the floating point processor inside of it and after the following of 80486 we are going to have pentium processors that are being introduced with additional features and additional capabilities such as multimedia system power saving mode hyper threads all these are being included depending upon the applications in the pentium processors so the first pentium 2 processor is specifically designed for processing videos and audios and graphics effectively so if you see that in general if we are using a processor a old version of 8086 or 80286 or 386 it is not capable of performing certain applications like photoshop so you can see that in photoshop we will be doing multiple uh, features and multiple editing tasks will be there and they are needed to be worked with highly efficient processors so the first processor that is being introduced to perform these photoshop applications is the pentium 2 processor so where we will be having these uh, that can work on the data very effectively and uh, the next is in the same 80486 we are going to have 8 kilobytes remember 8 kilobytes of cache memory so cache memory is an instant memory or else simply we can say that an internal memory which can be utilized at the same instant of time so that the data can be very effectively processed and the clock frequencies that we have been using in the upgraded version of 80486 is 25 to 100 megahertz earlier 8086 is capable of working only with 10 megahertz as the maximum frequency range when it reached to the 486 processor it is capable of working with 100 megahertz so that the processing time is further improved 